37 states have early voting procedures in place, including the four critical swing states, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Nevada, and Florida. In a move that some say favors the Democrats, a federal judge in Florida extended voter registration by a week because of Hurricane Matthew. Florida is a state that both candidates need to win and a race that could be the tightest in the nation. Eddie Fernandez is a political analyst. He's at WESH 2 in Orlando, Florida for us today. Nice to see you. Let's get right to it. Early voting, who does that help, Democrat or Republican? Well, historically, certainly here in Florida, early voting has, has trended towards Democrats. But uh, voting by mail has certainly trended towards Republicans. So it's always very interesting to see how that affects the election. Right here in Orange County, where Orlando is, we see that 55% of the voters have already voted by the day of the election. So the majority has been decided when those drop into the calculation. Hmm, which is pretty interesting. Are we expecting to see uh, records broken already because of how it's trending at this point? Well, Hurricane Matthew certainly had an effect on, on registration and on absentee delivery and, and now returns. But I, I expect a record-breaking year, uh, certainly on vote by mail. Uh, what's interesting about that, though, Soledad, is that we are seeing that, though that's usually a Republican stronghold already, in spite of the hurricane here in Florida, we are seeing uh, Democrats outpacing uh, Republicans in returning those absentee ballots by about 15 percent. So it'll be very interesting in the couple weeks to come to see how that continues to trend and whether Democrats maintain that lead. Yeah, and I was going to ask you if that has implications overall for turnout. Is it a sign of things to come on the actual election day? Well, one of the things that we're observing is that political insiders have true apathy towards uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. There isn't a lot of insider uh, excitement about these candidates, but at the, simultaneously, we're seeing more voter registration. We're seeing more interest in vote by mail opportunities. Yeah, which is completely contradictory in a lot of ways. Talk to me for Absolutely. a moment about the Latino vote, especially in the state of Florida. Normally, Latinos come in under 50 percent. Are we seeing any signs right. that they're actually going to cross that 50 percent threshold, even though as the numbers grow of the Latino population, actually that percentage has stayed the same over the last several elections? Absolutely, Soledad. And, and we see the, the Latina, the Hispanic vote across the country as being that elusive vote that both parties are chasing. And here in Florida, it's an absolutely critical vote. In Central Florida specifically, in Orange County, we are seeing actually uh, Hispanic registrations, new registrations in the state of Florida, being outpaced uh, by Hispanics over every other group, uh, over whites, over blacks. And I think that tells us that these are people who are moving to the state. Over one million Puerto Ricans in the state of Florida now, and many of them are coming right here to Central Florida to the I-4 corridor, which is the swing part of this very critical swing state in this election. So at the end of the day, do you think post-election, regardless of, of, of who wins, are we looking at a system where we, we end up having, uh, you know, the end of the two-party system? Well, this, if, if that's going to happen, this election is certainly one that could tip it uh, in that direction. We see the 15 percent barrier on, on, the, uh, on the debates uh, for any of the other candidates to get in. We haven't seen that since Ross Perot. The, the reality of the situation is that this, this election is triggering a lot of passions. But one of those passions, so that it happens to be apathy, as you well mentioned. And I think that is very prevalent among millennials who, who see just the, the, the mud being slung across the aisle and don't want a part of it. They want, uh, I think they want what's best for America and, and they want a, a difference, but they don't want to see this mudslinging and this party uh, d division. All right. I think that that sums it up, doesn't it? We're seeing a lot of passion and that passion is around apathy and lack of passion. Yes. Eddie Fernandez yes. for us today. Nice to talk to you. Thank you for that analysis. My pleasure, Soledad. Good to be with you.